movie notes on last books 2022 film 21 june 2024 viewing i w finished watching this today friday 21 june 2024 the day i filmed this right before i'm filming this and i'm tess corley leonardi she her hers in seattle and so these are my notes on the movie and so my description is is a fiction film about a retired detective who comes out of re retirement to investigate the case of the murder of a wife of a well-renowned television actor who lives in los angeles california and so it's a i really i think probably the standout for me for the movie was actually the audio it was really well done for sound editing and I thought it did an excellent job of not doing too much music and not uh, choosing music or audio sequences that were jarring with the content of the film itself. If that makes sense. Like watching it and I was like, this is actually like pleasant to the ears. Um, so that I would say that was a standout. Um, for the movies I've been watching, it was something that a stand up st stood out to me on the screen. I thought they did a good job uh, as well on the conveying of passage of a time in a repeated sense. So they invoke the same item or the same sequence of daily passings or routine passings to convey time is passing but this is also like the daily routine but then there might be a change on the daily routine if that makes any sense so like sometimes people say i do something every day and that's how they communicate that this is something that this it's part of this person's routine and this movie actually went through the effort and the work of being like here is that same sequence that you just saw earlier in the movie again to can instead instead of telling the people it's a show and tell as opposed to just telling which i right for a movie that makes a whole lot more sense but a lot of movies these days can get way too cognitive and just be like words 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 characters just talk 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 and it's like they forget that it's actually a movie and they could convey it far more um clearly by just like a repeated sequence which this movie did so i thought that was good as well and it was a captivating in the sense of uh, it was well written. It was funny throughout. And yeah, it showed off some of the Southern California architecture that kind of has Southern California feel. It had, it had Southern California feel, um, I would say. So it was true to the setting of the movie in that way. And then I would say there's, so the television actor who's being, wife's murder being investigated. It, the television show that he's an actor on had as, it's a courtroom drama. So there's a set, like a, a television set where they do the filming is a courtroom set up. And towards the end of this mo the movie, there's this guy who goes like berserk and is like trying to kill the detective guy, you kind of, kind of thing, thing, uh, kind of thing. And um, I, I, was, I was watching it and I was just like, you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of this reaction this person had to me uh, when I was in the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And we had this class assignment where we had to come up with a code to write a computer program to make the computer program play tic-tac-toe against an, a computer program written by another person. So then instead of us playing tic-tac-toes, our computer programs, we had to write them so that they would interact as a person with another person's code that was meant to inter interact as a person. And so play tic-tac-toe. And every game would have a win, loss, or a tie. And so... Uh, and the the only the, the what was the only rule the, the the rule was a uh your code had to be ready or no no the f number one rule was you cannot write out all of the options um so okay so you had to write a code we had to write a code and um 
the, the big rule for that was, so there were like two components. There was the grade for the assignment, and then there was a tournament where it played against other people in the class, um, the code, Battle of the Codes. And so I, uh, let's see, one person, the person who won the tournament part actually did what we were not supposed to do, or was not a rule. So maybe they got a lower grade, but they won the tournament kind of thing, right? They might have gotten a B or a C because they cheated and did what we were not supposed to do, which is write out every possible option for a tic-tac-toe game. So that was what they did. Um, and that person took first place right? uh, it, versus the rest of us came up with some sort of algorithm to play because um, that was what we were supposed to do. Uh, <laughs> we, we were, we were, the rest of the class was like, we want that A. <laughs> um, and the per other person was like, I just want to win. Um, Kevin, um, well, thing. And and the second rule was for the tournament part was the code had to be ready to play um, by the start of the tournament. And so I finished my code and it worked just fine. And yeah, and uh, I it worked on my computer and the software, it was the same software on the computer lab computers as our desktop computers. We were allowed to have a student license for the software program. Uh, or for the software, and the the student version that we wrote our codes on, or at least some of us, we, there were little differences between that and the computer lab version um, of the software. And so there, and it, for grades, determining the grades, it didn't matter which one was used. Like, so essentially if something didn't translate between the different software versions, it was okay because you could, the grade evaluation came at student version or um, computer lab version. So I was like, okay, it's all good to go. It works. And then I took it and we're, you know, we're about to start and on the computer lab version of the software, the code has like one problem. And it's, so I was like, okay, well, it works on my computer. And there's like 10 minutes to the start of the competition. And the first person I was supposed to go against in the class is like, that's not fair. She's cheating. It has to work. But the rule was it has to work by the start of competition. And the other rule, or not the other rule, but it counts if it's a student version or a computer lab version. So she ignored the rules and she was like, I'm native Hawaiian, you know, like this person should fail. And that, like, and she's saying that in front of everybody and I'm just like, well, I'm, I'm still going to finish it before the start of the competition, right? <laughs> like, uh, I don't really care if it plays or not. I'm fine with finishing in last place. That's, I followed the rules and it's for a grade. My code is just fine. It works on my computer. So it was like one thing that I had to insert like a minus one or take out a minus one and it worked just fine. And so I fixed it before the start and, you know, she's miffed because, um, all right, it works and I get it done before the start of competition. And the professor's like, no, she's fine. She followed the rules. And she's like all pissy moany, like, that's not fair. And I was like, you know, that reaction um, <laughs> in the movie of like the person wanting to kill the detective, I was like, that's, that was how that person felt. I followed all the rules, and, you know. Um, <laughs> I, 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 a lot of people jumped on or like said that how she treated me was kind of harassment slash discrimination. Um, and I was not the majority ethnicity at the university. <laughs> um, Though I personally think it was because she was a little bit overweight uh, and I was and had a history in, of athleticism and I wore athletic clothes to class and stuff like that. And so I think personally it was she didn't like having um, to watch somebody actually work. Right? <laughs> um, uh, her lack of um, effort under pressure, uh, like her lack of ability to do that made it uncomfortable to watch somebody actually get stuff done under time pressure. Right. Um, and especially, I, you know, I was wearing athletic clothing and stuff like that. And so it's just like, it tired her out. <laughs> and so she got a bit pissy. Um, but yeah, I was like, yeah, that's pro probably an accurate description. It's like, oh, I hope that doesn't translate to sports just because somebody's like all pissed off because they had to actually watch somebody work. They're going to be like, you cheated even though the rules were followed. And the officiators were like, the rules were followed. <laughs> Then that's the kind of situation where the person doing the fingerprinting is the problem. Um, but And then the person who actually did cheat, who took first place in the tournament, I didn't get first place. I didn't make the podium. I got fourth place. Um, which I did get a prize. I got a book. 
uh, on the software program. <laughs> Uh, but uh, the first person, they didn't have their results disqualified and stuff, and the person who harassed me did not actually harass the person who actually did cheat, so it's like, well, and at least I'm Native American, right, <laughs> and I'm white, but the the person who won was not right, not even Native, not Native Hawaiian, not Native American, not, not Native, like, North American or Oceania region, so it's like, it's a, I, I would guess, potentially then not racism but unless the person who actually did that to me hates native americans which is entirely possible but i was like i would go with the she just her physique was a reminder she didn't like to do physical exertion right um so that would be my guess but yeah so that one i was like i, I chuckled at that i was like yeah that reminds me of that person in life so there we go so my movie notes on last looks 2022 film 21 june 2024 viewing